Hi, this is Watchman Alexander Lawrence, and I'm here with my wife, Amanda Lawrence. And we wanted to talk to you, actually, we're just going to have a conversation with each other a little bit uh, this evening about a subject that's been on Amanda's heart and on her mind today. And I felt like it was a topic that a lot of disciples of Christ uh, deal with at some point or other. Um, sometimes, you know, in multiple stages during our life, during our Christian walk. And so I thought it might be beneficial for us to talk about this in front of the camera so that you guys can hopefully uh, benefit from it. So uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you were thinking and feeling today? That's a loaded question. Um, so I am reading a book called Slave Across the Street by Teresa Flores, and um, it is an autobiographical story of when she was 15 and she was trafficked in her neighborhood. Um, I have a heart for working with survivors of human trafficking and spreading awareness um, about that topic that's happening right in our backyards. And it talks about when she was in, in high school, she was leading a double life when she was living at home and had a full extracurricular activity schedule after school. Um, she had a long distance boyfriend, friends, a regular family life. And then at night she would sneak out of her, her house and was exploited every night. So, um, after a particularly graphic chapter, um, I went to bed last night, just very distraught and very upset and feeling, um, despondent and hopeless in a, this young lady was crying out to God while this was happening and was asking him to rescue her and save her. And, um, it, eventually after two years provided an escape, but I have been wrestling with the age old question of if God is good, then why do bad things happen? And when, when we cry out to him, why doesn't he answer? And I logically know what the Bible says about this topic, but it's, it's very hard to feel like all of that is applicable. So that was what I had shared with Alex this morning. And you had, um, you told me that you were struggling a little bit with feelings like, um, maybe your thoughts, you actually said you, you thought there were voices uh, speaking to you, not in like a weird, you know, <laughs> you're, you're possessed sort of way, but it just in the way that the enemy does, um, you know, gets into our heads a little bit and tries to leverage those feelings that, um, that are not biblical and tries to convince us of things that are they're unbiblical by engaging our emotions in the wrong direction. So uh, tell me a little bit more about those thoughts that you were having. Yeah. I had just more of an image of God being this malevolent entity who makes bad things happen so that then people can run back to him, um, this is seeking comfort and healing, um, very much in a way that say an abusive, um, spouse will, they'll hit and then be like, Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry here. It's okay. It's okay. And that's, that's kind of the, the feeling I had was God has to allow these things to happen. So he, he knows about all of the evil and, what the ramifications of that will be for years after even one incident occurs and he allows that to happen, but then kind of gets all the glory for turning it around and using it for good and redeeming it. So there was almost a sense of, well, like, who is God that he makes these bad things happen just to be the one who receives all of the accolades after. Yeah, and as I already told you, I completely empathize with that because I've had those kinds of thoughts also, and I've known other people who have. In fact, there were a couple of coworkers at Zenimax who were struggling with that line of thinking, and um, and similar things like if God was really good, why would He even allow 
the fall to occur? Why would he even let the serpent in the garden so that he could tempt Adam and Eve? Why were Adam and Eve even given the option? Um, because if he was really all powerful, couldn't he have just made someone who would not have sinned? Um, so those are really deep questions and, and questions that I think we all struggle with. Um, but there's, there's also something in us as believers that when we have those thoughts, I think we recoil from them immediately because like we, we know God is good and we have the experience of his goodness. And so it's like, Ooh, there's this dichotomy and I don't know what to do with that. Um, so tell us a little bit about, you know, if those things, thoughts evolved throughout the day, if you were able to counteract them, um, or if, if that was, is ongoing, but, um, yeah, that first, and then I have another question for you. Okay. That last night, even when I was very upset, even as I was like, why God, why? I was like, but I know that you are good. And I know that you allow these things because the, enemy temporarily has, has power here. Um, and you, you do make crooked paths straight and you do redeem these situations and, and use these horrible things for our good. So it was almost like I had to do like that positive self-talk from scripture to, to counter what I was feeling because my, Emotions are not an indicator. They're, they're, they're not my moral compass as far as really differentiating right and wrong. Or, um, I don't want my emotions to, to, to guide how I feel about God. And I believe scripture is true and I want that to be what leads me. So, um, so just have, having, to kind of talk myself into what I know is true. I was finding it difficult to really pray to God because I was kind of mad at him. Um, and I'd said, God, I'm mad at you. I can't talk to you right now, but I know that you're still here and I need you to just kind of work with me here and just give me some spiritual boosting right now. Um, and I listened to some praise and worship music in my car, um, all day and was just praising him through that. And then it did help to, to reach out to other believers and I emailed you and a friend and, um, kind of got even more than this all out on paper. And that, that, that helped to, to quiet the noise. Um, and then it, it made me want to do something for the kingdom instead which might be your next question. So I'm going to pass it back. So God is not afraid of our questioning things and he's not afraid of us um, even getting a little bit angry at him. Um, he doesn't want us to stay in that place, but if that's how we're feeling, that's how we're feeling. And he would rather us be honest about that and address it. Um, however, I don't think he wants us getting bitter and staying bitter because he's already revealed to us in his word and you already said this, you know from his word what's true. So he's already revealed that he is good and he does not do evil and he never approves of evil. But he has made a a universe in which evil can exist. So in that sense, he creates evil. He creates the potential for it. He allows that space. Um, and if he's not actively intervening, then evil is going to have its way. And we're in this world where he can't, always intervene for, for legal reasons, you know, and he's, he has stepped back because of Adam and Eve's decision to you know do things on their own. So we have to invite God into the world to act, you know, to intervene. Um, and there's, you know, but there's lots of reasons why he might not always be able to right away. That doesn't mean that things aren't going to be worked out eventually. And we have that promise that, you know, every prayer for help is going to eventually be answered. Um, it may not be in the timing that we want, and uh, it may not prevent us from going through painful things right away. But eventually, yeah, every tear is going to be wiped away. Every pain is going to be removed um, for those who call in the name of the Lord and, and who hope in him. Um, so my next question is, where does your sense of justice come from? 
my sense of justice as far as who corrects wrongs or um, like whose responsibility it is to bring about justice. The, the feeling that you get inside when you think about someone being trafficked or you think about just the evils and the ills in the world and that makes you angry, where does that, that sense of this is not right, where does that come from? The Lord. Okay, good. <laughs> that was not a trick question. Um, so if it comes from him, then is he the one that is defining it and making it the standard for the entire universe? Okay. So that we're agreed on that, which is good because that's kind of foundational. <laughs> um, so when we decide that God is not doing things the right way, then what we're saying is that our our definition of justice and what's right and wrong is above his. But he gave us that sense, which means it has to be perfect. You know, it, that has to be the standard of righteousness. So whatever is going on right now in the bigger picture, which we can't always see, but in the bigger picture, it is being done for the right reasons. It is just. Now, there's a lot happening with angelic powers and principalities that we don't see. And I think that's why in the book of Job, God is, is giving us a glimpse into that and showing us that, hey, there's, there's some stuff going on here you don't understand. You, we are so limited in our ability and our finite minds to know what God is up to. And, and this is not just human beings either. He actually says in the book of Enoch to the watchers who came down and sinned, he said to them, yes, you had a mystery about the heavens, but it was a reprobate mystery. In other words, it's only a, a portion. It's a little bit of what I have, what is what there is to know. Um, and you've gone off thinking that you know so much but you really don't. And, um, and I've got something much bigger going on here and just wait until you guys see how this is all going to turn out. And, uh, you know, when Yeshua finished his ministry, he actually went down to Sheol and it says he proclaimed to, uh, those who had sinned before the flood, he proclaimed what he had done. He had destroyed the works of Satan whom they had followed by their lusts. So, um, there's so much about the cosmos and God's plan for things that uh, is, is still in progress and that we're not privy to. So we have to be humble, I think. And, and that's my, my encouragement for everybody out there today is that um, this is really what separates the good guys from the bad guys, is our humility in realizing that it's not about knowing everything. It, that's what the enemy wanted us to believe. That's what he told Adam and Eve. Look, you want this knowledge of good and evil, but God didn't want that for them. He wanted them to be innocent. And by grasping at this knowledge that they weren't supposed to have, they ruined everything. So uh, the enemy wants to, to enlighten us. He wants to bring us to this place of, of knowing more so that we can become like God. But God says, no, trust me. Just trust me. I have things under control. I know what's best for you. And you know what? If we waited on God, eventually he would show us all those things. But everything grows from something small. So Adam and Eve were just a seedling. And as they grew, God would have shown them more and more about the cosmos. And he's going to do that for his people for all of eternity. He's going to be revealing more and more of his infinite wisdom and his infinite plan throughout the ages that will go on forever. So all we have to do is wait for that. Um, and just like a tree starts out this little seed and it gets huge and powerful and glorious, that's going to happen with us too if we wait on him to grow us and to fulfill us. So um, we don't have to figure it all out. You know, Don't worry about it. Don't stress out that much about that stuff. I know way more today than I did when I was a child. Because God has been growing me and showing me more things. I can understand a lot now that I couldn't then. <clears throat> and if I tried to explain to my son, who's eight years old, <laughs> the, the amount of information that I now have because of my research and my study of Scripture, it would, 
his little head would explode. 95% of it would go over his head. So I have to introduce concepts to him a little bit at a time. We can't just be opened up to the fire hose of God's knowledge uh, and his manifold wisdom. It would totally overwhelm us. So have patience. He's going to show us more and more as we grow. And we're not even in heaven. Well, I shouldn't say in heaven. We're not even resurrected on the new earth yet. We're not even um, with our our husband, the Messiah. Once we're married, our spouse is going to show us all kinds of stuff that's awesome a little bit at a time, you know, because that's, that's what you do when you're married. You you want to give good gifts and, and show new things to your spouse um, just day after day. So uh, those are my thoughts about it, and I'll leave it over to you to add anything more. The one thing that came to mind while you were talking about Job is God never answers him. And even after Job does question him, and it's like, why is this happening? God you know, lays the smack down on him. He's like, where were you when I did this giant list of things? But he never answers him. And it would have been a simple answer that well, like, would have almost honored Job. Like, well, I wanted to prove to the enemy that you would be steadfast and faithful even if. And like Job could have taken that as a compliment. And he didn't explain it. And yet he he still blessed Job even more after that, after he had questioned him and after he had wrestled with his faith and, um, and I hadn't thought about it like that. And, um, until now, and I appreciate recognizing that God lets us ask those questions and sometimes he doesn't answer us, but it's still worth it because like you said, everything is, is good and is just in the big picture. And I, I feel like God's plan is, um, could be compared to a needlework where the flip side of it is just all of these threads and they're a mess and they're kind of uh, unattractive colors or with other colors. And then you flip it around and you're like, huh, that's what it was supposed to look like. That's perfect. But you, you can't see that. Did I? Yeah. <laughs> What's the other one? No, wait. No, no. I'm pretty sure I made that up. <laughs> anyway. Um, okay. That's, what I mean. That's wonderful. An original analogy, baby. I love that. Anyway, Corey Ten Boom once said that. And um, that is something that I want to hold, hold on to is it just boils down into something that I have to categorize under the I don't understand and that's okay because I'm not God and he's good and I'll love him anyway category. Yeah. This video is already longer than I intended, but one more quick thing is that it really is all about God's glory. Everything um, that just everything that he's created, he's done so for his glory because his glory is the highest thing that exists. And um, this, not, this is not the whole answer, but I think part of it is that when we go through awful things, we then have the opportunity to glorify God by showing mercy because that mercy comes from him. He's the source of that kind of compassion. You really cannot forgive someone entirely apart from the heart of God. So um, when we have an injustice done to us and then we release the people that did it to us because of love, then God is glorified, and there's there's actually a power in that that we don't see, but that ascends. Just like when the bad guys get people to do bad things, it increases the iniquity force. When we do good things like have mercy on people, it increases the love force in the universe. And that, man, that's being recorded for all of eternity. So hopefully that helps everybody. Um, this video is already longer than I had also intended, but um, really quickly, God redeemed that 15-year-old. She is a social worker. She is very active in um, advocating for other survivors. She's gotten a slew of legislation passed um, from her, her story. She owns her own nonprofit, and 
I just think that's amazing how, how God used her pain and trauma in s- such a positive way eventually. So we we'll wanted to end it on a happy note. Yeah, that's amazing. Praise God. Well, uh, hopefully that helped. And we ask that God would bless all of you guys and help you to humble yourselves and to be obedient and trust in him in all things. Thanks. Shalom.